Hi, Nicole. I'm happy to see you. <laughs> Hi, Sunia. Nice Long to see you no again. See. I know that from the session, I learned that uh, you have a <clears throat> lot of psychic abilities, you are medium and all that. And mm -hmm. I really would like to hear more about that abilities. If you're okay with it, would you like to share some of it? Sure. That, thank you. Uh, started as a child, really. Um, learned really quickly that I can't tell anyone. <laughs> So when you're holding your, I was holding my mother's hand and faces would come in front of me and their spirits saying, hey, hey, can you help me? Hi, hi, hi. And they're just right there. And then I'm looking up. Can you, can you really? No, nothing. Okay. And you learn really quickly. You learn really quickly. So, so my house, one and a half story. And people were lining up to talk to me. And when I went to bed. Wow. That it was normal. That that it was normal. Were you scared of anything? You're so little. Uncomfortable. Hmm? Uncomfortable. Scared sometimes mm. because sometimes spirit can be really wanting some help or really needing some help or really wanting to talk with us. Like, hey, you can see me. And then they just they know you can hey. see. Huh? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah, I can see you. So I remember a couple of times just within the last 10 years, like, hey, buddy. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> so they got frightened. People that can see, we, we look different. We look different. I think we look different. So we, yeah, yeah, I, th I believe so. Like, Sometimes when I'm accessing information, I have this big, huge tube of light coming out of my head, you know, like, <laughs> so we look different, <laughs> right? Oh. And so if we're always in a healing situation and I didn't know to turn it off growing up because I thought it was normal and never talked to anybody. So I think we look different, right? Yeah. So that's what it was like growing up. You know, a lot of fun talking. Difficult, yeah. Yeah. You have to I, move to several different worlds. Yeah, going to different planes of existence is very interesting. Um, my daughter, she is 23, 23 now. And she said, Mom, can, did you go where time exists? And I went, Yeah. So when you're younger, you do that and do some interesting things, astral projection, flying, going above the earth, saying, hey, <laughs> you know, and it's like, yeah, she said, you didn't. I said, yeah, I did. it's okay. So I explained it to her. She said, you really did. I said, yeah, but it's not something that you want to go there kind of on a whim. You <laughs> So then safety becomes a huge thing. So when I'm with clients, when I'm with my daughter, especially, <laughs> or with anybody, safety is very important to me. So as it should, because it's a responsibility. So even astral projection of teaching people how to do that. So I, I kind of hold on to their cord <laughs> and say, and I put like a sign on the back of my back. Like, you know, you remember those kick me signs and I put a word on there and have them go above and go behind and read the sign, come back down into their body in case of what did you see? You know, make sure the room's safe beforehand, <laughs> you know, things like that. So there's a lot of exercises you can do, but safety is very important to me. It's extremely important. You just don't go all willy nilly. Let's go in the air. No, 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 no. Let's do the room first. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's do the room first. So but those are advanced too. So you have to go with whatever the person is at that time, right? It takes a so bit. You are, some... you are teaching astral travel. So you are physically being there together and you guide them. Yeah, I don't like doing that kind of thing over Zoom or anything like that. It, it has to be in my presence. It has to be safe. It has to make sure that 
if I'm safe, mm. that I can build pretty good fields and bubbles so that they can't even try to go. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, so you teach Ezra traveling and then share some of your um, mediumship that you've had. Uh, I'm Aboriginal. I, so I'm full status. And um, last year, a friend of mine, she owns a, um, a 60 acre retreat place that she bought. And she asked me if I could go and honor the land, see what kind of spirits are there, namely Aboriginal, because she knows that she's on a native land. This is all our native mm. land. So, oh, I see. so I went and I had a conversation. They're all on video of like what was said, who said this, who said that, what they would like to have happen. Um, so for the next four mornings at dawn and at dusk, we do a ceremony for the people who have been murdered. And it ended up being that um, like, um, Scottish people were there. They were horribly murdered. Um, Irish people, different walks of life were murdered. So we all did a land, um, honoring for them. So there was a lot of interesting, um, and beautiful gods and goddesses that came by throughout that process. And uh, yeah, I should make a big, huge, long thing about it, is it with her blessing, because it was quite profound for everyone. So in my ancestry, it usually takes about four days for the spirit to go across the river. And uh, who else came by? It was so many, so many people, ancestors, um, ascended masters, gods and goddesses. Um, the nice Templar came by. King Arthur was there. <laughs> like, um, the Egyptian gods were there, of course, because I have affiliation with them too. Um, the Olympians were there. Um, there's so many that so many things that happened there. It was just profound. And now I'm being yelled at right now, saying, "Well, I was there too." <laughs> wow. So it took us several days to clear the acreages, right? From the memories of spirits are there? Nothing to do with clearing. I think there's a difference between understanding what clearing and cleansing is. And Okay, uh, please do. So what we were doing, we were honoring everybody who had passed, who were murdered, that were, and they're just restless. They're, they weren't, they decided not to go to their gods. They decided not to pass over. So as you can tell, I'm actually, my voice is changing because I have, I have a native man that is with me trying to explain, <laughs> right, to say. So it was, it was quite an honor to do that. And I had to have the owners and some of the facilitators that were there working at this retreat center and they end up um, helping me putting an offering down in the morning picking it up we we're doing a lot of songs a lot of talking to spirit um it it, it it's quite intense it was quite intense well you say the spirit Sorry, are you saying the spirits who passed away murdered for, for that area, they, their spirits are still in that soil? They didn't everyone, go bother to... Hmm? Everyone is there if they wanted to come. Everyone is there? Yeah, yeah. And any, any place that I've ever moved to or rented from, there's always spirit. We're never alone. We're never oh. alone. <laughs> yeah. Right? So usually when I move into a new place, then I kind of help the situation along. And, and I have, I'm, I do house cleansings and clearings, what people think it is, but it's not really that. It's just honoring all the spirits there. And um, there's a lot of things that happen. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's honoring. It's helping them move over if they wanted to move over. It's, 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 it's what spirit wants to do, what they're worth 
that they think that they want to. And it's usually a counseling session too. <laughs> and there's a bunch of things that kind of happen. And I can't go in particular because there's many particulars. So why is it that you do things the way that you do? You, there isn't a pigeonholed answer. You have this emotion, that emotion. Well, it's because of this, because of that. Well, spirit is us, really, right? Mm. So it's determining why they decided to stay. Why, if they think that they are trapped, why do they think they just want to be here because their family is here? Um, if they want to go back to source, heaven, God, then they come back. Then they do. <laughs> like, it, it's Some of them are not even trapped at all. They're just hanging out with the family. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's it's a lot of talking to and and determining if they need help or if they want to. And usually the ones that do, they usually come to me the day before. Right? <laughs> So, yeah, there is a lot of spirit activity there. And, uh, but I always get, I just start crying whenever Hera comes. I'm just crying. <laughs> there are certain um, um, beings that I just start bawling my eyes out. Um, and I just want to puddle on the floor. To be in the presence of source is just... So profound that you're just a big, huge mess ball on the floor and you're shaking and convulsing. <laughs> and then, you know, somebody else that can see and feel they come by or I call them immediately. They go, I can't see you because you're so full. Of, I can't see you. <laughs> and it's just, yeah, it's really, really fun. It's a really fun experience in a way. Like, being able to connect is is quite a an honor, really. Um, I don't know why Source decided to do that or them decided to give me this gift, but I'm trying to be as as honorable as I can because and I check in with them all. You know, so I check in with them all. Like I I grew up with having Arturians on at my room around my bed, so <laughs> I check in with them. <laughs> it's like is it okay if I do that <laughs> and I'm talking to your guides and I'm talking to you and and I'm talking to them and and in a reading I'm talking to a lot of people that the same conversation and you might not know that I'm talking to a lot of different beings but I'm talking to a lot of different beings yeah it's really interesting seeing the original people of the the feng shui masters that are around. And I was like, you guys are awesome. <laughs> you know, so it's just, um, it's a very interesting life that I've left so far that nobody really knows. Now you can yeah. talk about it so we can utilize yeah. your ability. That's why we yeah. are here today, right? Yeah. So talk about your ability. Well, I think I was actually watching. It was very interesting because I never really watched any of Dolores Cannon's um, interviews or anything except probably about just the end of last year, mid last year, something like that. And the way that she explained it is, is perfect. And it's like, oh my gosh, that's right. Because when I give a reading, I see major timelines and they want to know something. They want to know how will this impact them. I said, but the thing is, is that you understand that if you choose this and choose like all these different choices, it can impact it however you want to have it. But you have choice to determine what you want to do. Right? I can't choose for you. Um, but, but there are certain ways that you can get to where you want to go. But really, it all comes down to you loving yourself and being that embodiment of love for you in all aspects. And to be able to have that flow through you so that you can become the person that you thought that you could be and you didn't know that you were because you weren't in that embodiment in the first place. 
So it's just fascinating how they want to know answers, but at the same time, it all comes back to you. <laughs> and all you can do is just be that source to say, you can do this. Like, you, you can do this. You just have to be you. Right? It's quite a lovely experience to watch people grow. And I know that my friends that who are my mentors as well, they've noticed that in even the past two years <laughs> as well. So it's quite interesting. It's great that we all get to go on this journey. But I get no information about me. I get none. That is interesting, isn't it? You know everybody except yourself. Yeah, I get, I get none. I get none. I try to find loopholes, but I ask, okay, so I want to do this venture with you. Can I do a reading on you? So that <laughs> I try to find those loopholes and it never really works. Why do you think that that's the way it's designed? Because I'm supposed it's to be. all medium psychics. Oh. They, these people like, cannot do? I, I think so. I think so because I know that I have to muddle. I have to be messy. I have to go through all the emotions, everything to get to where I'm there. Or else I'm just kind of bypassing the system and that's not correct to do. I still, oh, have, I see. I still have to go through this, uh, yeah, <laughs> confusing confliction within to go through all the steps is just as much as anybody else do, you know, and it, 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 it sucks in a way, but at the same time, I understand it. That's what makes it more sucky, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I have fun with it too. Like, mm -hmm. but uh, I really, looking back, it is fun. But at the time when we go uh, through, it's never fun. It, it's it's very frustrating. <laughs> very. It is, yeah. and especially when you can see, it's like you're right there. Can you just like tell me? <laughs> what little bit? Just a little bit. And I usually get this look of like, I'm just going to love you. <laughs> <It's> like, oh. <laughs> so frustrating. <laughs> mm. So then you all start laughing and it's just how it goes. <laughs> like, you're going to tell me nothing, are you? <laughs> like, I'm not going to say anything. Okay. <laughs> mm. But it's fun wearing. Like, for instance, I was with my friend Amy. I was talking with her on the phone. And she said, I, I think I would like some protection. And I went, well, I, can, I can see where Zeus is. And then she said, I just heard a boom. And I went, yeah, that's Zeus. <laughs> I remember when, um, oh, good gracious, when you, Ukraine, when everything was happening with Ukraine. The, uh, very, be the, the be very beginning, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell and I didn't feel safe. I knew that there was something that I couldn't see in my room, that I could, I knew that there was something, I don't know why I couldn't feel it. I knew that I had to go through it. And I just called um, Archangel Michael because he was the first being that I saw that helped me. And, and I was five and he helped me. And so he said, if you have any problems, if you get scared, you just call me. So I called him a lot. Nice to you. So he did. He helped me. He got it was something underneath the bed that I couldn't see. And it was just an essence. It was uh, something that I couldn't feel quite right. So he says, I'm going to take this and I'm going to take it up, take it to where it needs to go. And it's like, okay. And thank you. And I'm like, by the way, how many are you right now? And I'm like, around. Give me approximate. He's 17 million players in it. I was like, okay. Really? <laughs> than 17 million of them at that moment <laughs> like okay <laughs> so i get I, I it's what i do i ask weird questions like that it's like how does that work <laughs> i like to know i don't want to do <laughs> but i like to know <laughs> so i'm the weird person that asks these kind of odd questions where i go i wonder what odin looks like it's like okay he's right there okay <laughs> okay <laughs> So what was the experience of Ukraine, the starting war? Um, I don't personally wanted to get into that kind of feeling of that. I okay. don't like to get into that kind of world kind of stuff. Um, 
just because I know that there's a lot of things that are going on at the moment that I don't want to interfere with because if all the energies need to do what they need to do, I'm just kind of right. interfering with that. And I don't want to, um, I don't want to interfere with all that stuff. <laughs> hey, so you were I, just, uh, you were gonna, uh, just before that, you were telling me that in the beginning, the, when the, 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 when the Russia attacked Ukraine, you felt something that's what you, but you didn't finish the conversation. I it was just inside of my room that I need personal help with, right? Oh, okay. So that I, I, I sometimes get where I'm going, this is an odd situation. I have never felt this before. And I just want to have clarity on it. And I usually ask Archangel Michael to help me with that. Or, I, you know, I know that there's some sort of type of healing work that needs to happen, either with the land or something. So I ask Archangel Raphael to come by and, and help with that. So they all kind of talk and I seem to ask a lot of um, ascended masters if I know that would probably help the person, right? So like, are you busy? Can you go over there? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like <laughs> I'm not the one to say, can you go now? And it's like, oh God, no, don't, don't ever. No, I'm very um, soft-spoken. And um I'm very cognizant of other people's time. So um, it's more of an asking of like, can you please? <laughs> this person needs help. <laughs> so, so that kind of thing where there's a lot of things that can be done. A lot of healing that can be done. Mm. Not just from above. There's a lot of healing that other ascended masters that can help with. And they have let me know over the course of time that, you know, like, um, like other, other system, they can do things. They can kind of put things inside of your water to help you with your immune system. They can, you know, things like that. If we're in that 3D moment of feeling that we need to do it in the, in that way, because sometimes people can't think of anything other than just, well, I need to have more echinacea right it's our emotions and our our brain capacity at the moment where we think that we have limitations on how things can be so it some people can't have that instantaneous like they can't think of that way they can't it doesn't compute right so therefore you have alternatives to be able to have that healing happen where it could work so whenever i'm doing a healing session and they come to me and I know that they can't get it like they, at the moment. Well, then therefore I am, I have it down that I'm a helper to the spirits. So I don't know all else to say where I'm going. I'm not the one who's healing, but I'm certainly helping by talking through everything of what they're saying to say to happen. Or if they're saying that they're going to be helping with somebody's like cartilage in their knee and they be able to help them with that. So you're going to feel like, you know, a smoothing out in your knee and they go, I can feel that. And therefore they're, they're doing the work, but I'm just letting them know what is happening next and what they're saying that they're doing. So, you know, if people are kind of stuck and they need to have that 3D moment of how things work, then we do it that way. If they're not, then, then we do it alternative ways too. Where I know that when I was doing something particular, which I'm writing a book about. And um, so I know that in that instance, when I have, <laughs> I have beings to take them up to a, like a, a stasis pod until I can convene back. And then all of a sudden they're back. It's like, okay, well, this is now we can continue on the process. I know that I'm not really explaining things a lot. Um, so I'll just say that. Um, so everybody that is on Turtle Island that has, that is an Aboriginal descent. I used to, because I had no boundaries, I would allow them to kind of affect me physically. So if they didn't have an arm, I didn't have an arm. If they were raped, I felt their rape. If they were... Um, brutally murdered, I felt that murder. 
um, I felt until they died, if they were choked out, I was being choked out. So when you're a child and when you're growing, you have these things happen to you and you thought that you had fibromyalgia, right? So not saying that I don't because I have all the pressure points for it, or I did anyway. Um, it's just the fact that I felt it. So in the course of time, not having that happen anymore and not feeling it, but actually doing a dictation. So I guess it's a record keeper for the Aboriginal people that we have all lost. So the earliest record that I write down, I actually do write them all down. And the earliest record that I have is 1019. That's when the... Um, 1019? Yeah, so they have it recorded as being uh, 1,020, I think it is, or 1,030 of when they thought that the Scandinavians, the Norse people came over. But the gentleman that, and he's here, the gentleman that, um, that went through that process, he said, I asked him, what, do you know what time that was? You know, I know that you don't un understand the timing as we do now, but can you give me a recorded specific year at least and he said it was 1019 he thinks yeah so I would dictate kind of what had happened whether or not they left a limb how the pro process was um I think was that case was they were watching and they they took him and it was in Labrador and they would spear them and then cauterize it immediately. So all the blood stayed within the body and they would dunk them in the cold, cold water, bring them back up, do it again. And this went on, I think he was with me for about four days, four days or six days, I can't remember that long. It's in my records, but yeah. So they're with me and we're, throughout that time and I wake up and they're here and so that's why I don't get a lot of sleep sometimes when I'm doing that that very important kind of life purpose where um, that time is denoted for them and if I have to do my work and my job then um, they're kind of taken they're taken to this stasis pod and I continue with my work. So if I have a reading or if I have something else, then, then okay, I come back and I call back and I say I'm done. And then all of a sudden he's standing right beside me. And then I take more dictation. Okay, they're doing this to me now. And I can, I can see where he's at and uh, where he is. And I'm looking around as if I'm him. It's like, okay, I see a bird fly this way. And it's, it's a long, arduous kind of situation. Yeah. Horrible, horrible situations, horrible stories. But um, I can't say some of them because some of them just passed in 1986, uh, 1995. And I can't, I can't say that because they're families. You can't quite do that. So I know that I can't put that in the book. So there are recorded tribes that I have never even heard of where <laughs> I'm writing it down <laughs> and I go okay well do you know what area it is now and they said North Carolina okay and I look up and I go wow oh, there is a tribe that actually existed in North Carolina at that time <laughs> and I, I get confirmation that way so that's another one of my life kind of thing that I do wow. but I'll be ready yeah yeah you yeah. wrote them all now ready to publish I have, yeah. Well, I have to do the the beginning of the knowledge, acknowledgements and everything, but in terms of actually writing down everything, yeah, they're all written down. All written nice. Down. Yeah. So what happened to these souls? Are they all released? Oh, afterwards, it's really, it, it's just, it's something where we're all crying and then all of his ancestors or her ancestors or wherever, they're all there. They're all in the room and we're all bawling our eyes out and we're all, and you can see the ancestral line totally being cleansed. Beautiful. It's just, 
it's just something that is just amazing. So I know that there's more like me, but I've never met anyone because I've never, I was adopted into a white family. So I, I basically don't know anybody who's Aboriginal really. So if I, I, I've never really told anyone, like I said, until three years ago, I came into this, this arena, right. And then this being vocal about things. So, so yeah. Wow. Yeah. It, just listening all that, it's like, uh, I don't think I can handle that ability. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's good to have psychic ability, but oh God, that's uh, quite kind of load, huh? It, it's something for them. I, if I'm, I, 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 I have nothing to compare their life and how they had lived and how they have passed. It's, it's an honor that, that they want to come to me that they want to be able to do that so when i notice that they're native and they want to start talking then i have it i just say okay yes i'm ready to do that or i have some important business probably the next day or two that i can we convene this at another time and i'll call you what is your name and so then we do it that way yeah wow yeah. thank you for sharing all this amazing work you are doing it and uh, this kind of talk we can do forever, hours and hours and hours. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, maybe we can do some other time. Continue. Yeah. Will yeah. that be an idea? Right. And I love making bracelets. That's what I like to do. Okay. So Beautiful. I have a lot of goddesses. I go, oh, okay, I'll make it with you. I like, okay. okay, yay. <laughs> so things like that. So I'm a psychic medium. I usually do psychic um readings for them i do land acknowledgements i love doing house readings in terms of what has been there before go back in time what is there um healing sessions that are basically helper to the spirits that are around us and also i help them help the people heal themselves and what needs to happen right because yes, I'm going to their higher spirit of like what yes. do you think that they need to do and how they think it Right. So we are going to put your website as well as contact information uh, of the description part of it so that they yeah. know where to contact to get service of yours. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, sure. That'd be great. Thank you so much for sharing your Thank you. so many wisdoms and doing a great job. Until uh, yeah, we, we all meet do again. Part, right. Then huh? I do. What is that? <laughs> we all do our part. Right. So if. Um, yeah. I always think that I can do something a little bit better for other people and I'm here to be of service to other people and however that may take. That's yeah. great. Thanks yeah. for sharing. And to be more again. And bye-bye. And you take care. You too. Bye Thank for you. now. Okay.